everyone welcome to the homegrown artist today we're going to be doing a very loose floral watercolor painting and it's all going to be in real time and before we get started let's go ahead and talk about the tools and materials that i will be using i'll be using arsh 140 pound 100 cotton cold pressed paper and it is actually this block but the paper that i have actually became detached from the block but as you can see it's still um, a few sheets of paper gummed together so i'm not going to tape mine down but if you are using loose sheets of watercolor paper please be sure to tape yours down because we are going to be using a lot of water um, i'm also using the silver black velvet line of watercolor brushes this is a size 12 mostly used for laying down water on the paper not really for mixing any colors size 8 for mixing colors and dropping them into the water and then a size 4 for any details or anything that we need to add to the painting later on these are great paint brushes they're made with synthetic um, squirrel hair and they come to a really sharp point and ha hold a lot of water and then I personally like to use a rag that doesn't have a lot of lint or anything um, to tap off any excess water from or paint from my paintbrush you could also use a paper towel or a tissue I use the rag just to save on tissues um, but for using it on the actual painting itself I do use the paper towel to lift up any excess paint or um, water and then here's the watercolor bucket that i've shown a million times but i love it you can hold your paint brushes and it also has three wells for water so you don't have to change it as often and then i ha i use the third one for only clean water i don't ever get that dirty because in loose painting it's nice to have clean water to kind of spread the paint around if you need to i'm using core watercolor paints for this painting and i've just squeezed them out into this maiden palette here and we're going to be using colors such as quinacridone magenta quinacridone violet and then some of the warmer yellows and oranges like diarylide dire yellow and transparent pyro orange and probably cobalt teal and ultramarine blue mixed with some of those colors to create the greens and everything for the leaves later um, again before we get started painting let's do some troubleshooting um, for maybe why your painting is not coming out the same way as mine one of the main things is the paper that you're using it's very important to use 100 percent cotton paper and 140 pound if you use 90 pound paper it will warp and buckle even if you tape it down because we will be using a lot of water and then also if you use cellulose paper the paint and the water is not going to spread and it's going to dry unevenly so i would suggest using 100 percent cotton paper for this paint for this painting and then the watercolor paints are important as well these are core and they just burst out and flow everywhere and that's the main reason why i like them for these loose styles of paintings um, but you can use any other kind of paint that has a lot of flow like uh, daniel smith or m graham they tend to have a good amount of flow but there are some paints even artist grade that don't really have a lot of flow and especially student grade tend to not flow out that well either um, so this is mission gold and it paints like sennelier and stuff like that as well don't really have a lot of flow they're more for a lot of control in your painting which is good in some cases but for this loose style of painting it's not really the best so i'm going to show you an example here on the scrap sheet of paper of what i'm talking about so for this the painting that i'm doing i'm using a lot of water like my brush is going to be dripping with water and i'm adding tons of it on there on the paper and this is i'm doing an example on this paper in the same kind of style that i'll be doing it on the actual painting and when it comes to paints that have a lot of high flow especially with core and the aquasol binder um, you can take paint straight from the pan without mixing water in it and drop it into a really wet wash of water and it will still burst out and flow and that's kind of one of the great things about core watercolors is that it, it has flow no matter what um, which is really really nice and that's what we're looking for with this loose style of painting here so eventually these colors will spread throughout this whole entire um, water area and you'll get that loose feeling um, and this is without adding any water in general whenever you add no water to your paint like if you have more pigment on your paintbrush and more water on the paper it's not going to flow and spread and that's in general generally that's what you're looking for if you wanna have a lot of control. And that's what we're gonna have here with the Mission Gold paints. You'll see I'm picking up paint straight from the pan and I'm not adding any water, but it doesn't flow out, it doesn't burst and have that effect. Um, but you can add water to the paint, which is what you would generally do if you want the paint to flow out, if it's a, a low flow type of paint, and it will spread out a little bit more. But to get it to cover the entire water 
area, you would have to kind of use your brush and spread it out a little bit more, which kind of defeats the purpose of that loose floral effect that I'm, I'm going after in this type of painting here. So here I'm gonna show you how core reacts whenever you take it and mix it with a little bit of water. It flows out even more. So even with just adding a few drops of that paint at the tip, it's gonna burst out and eventually when it dries, it's gonna cover that entire water area with that paint without me having to use my brush to spread it out. And I'll get more dynamic effects like a darker area where I added the paint, a mid-tone color where it's spread out and then a lighter color when it gets to the edges. Um, you could add flow aid to any paints that you don't that you have that don't flow if you want to get the same effect or you can just kind of maneuver um, the paints a little bit differently than I'm doing to get that loose effect. There's different techniques that you can do, but for this painting in particular in the style that I'm doing, it's good to have paints that have that flow. So now we're going to be doing kind of like an arc of flowers, starting with warmer colors, going down into darker, deeper cooler colors and I'm sorry if the voiceover is a little bit off from my hand movements there was a lot of noise whenever I was recording this video um, so I decided to just just do a voiceover um, so now let's get to the painting I'm just laying down some water in the shape of a flower I'm not using any references or anything this is just flowers from my imagination and you can do either you can use a reference if you want to especially if you don't know kind of the shape of flowers and you can see like the puddles of water here. I don't mind that at all. I actually want that. And to add to that, I'm splattering some water around the flower for two reasons. And I'll get to the second reason later, but one is just to add more dynamic to the flower itself. And I'm also spraying with a, with a water bottle, just some um, light sprays of water around the edges of the petals so that the edges, when the watercolor kind of bleeds into them, they're a little bit lighter and kind of more loose as well. And uh, to start off with, I'm using the quinacridone magenta and to make it a warmer color. And here you can see me squeezing the paint out of my brush because I accidentally used the larger brush to pick up paint and that tends to waste a lot of paint. So I moved down to the smaller brush. And uh, as I was saying, to make it a warmer color, I'm taking that transparent pyro orange and kind of mixing that into the pink because I want the top flower to be kind of the warmest one. And here I'm dropping it in like I did in the example and you can see how it just spreads out and in this gorgeous manner I absolutely love it and you can see like the little fingers of the watercolor paint just kind of flowing out and bursting into the flower and giving it that loose beautiful effect and you can see that it gives you kind of lighter areas as well as darker areas and then I'm going to go ahead with the quinacridone violet and drop in some shadow in the flower and you can do this in the second layer um, or add it later whatever you want to do i like to do it in the first layer because it just lets the watercolor kind of work and blend on its own and the goal is for me at least is to get everything kind of laid down in the first layer so that it looks more effortless and there's not as many brush strokes and i'm tapping the color in very gently and I'm even adding some of that darker color to the edges of the flowers. And I don't think I do this to all of the flowers, just to some of them. And that just makes the flowers more dynamic and it makes it possible to where I may not have to add any other layers to the flowers in the other, in the second and third layers. They just automatically look like flowers with kind of the right shading. I also splatter that color um, towards the edge as well. Uh, just to kind of make it look more loose and keep that loose feeling throughout the entire painting. So for the second one, I'm just going to use quinacridone magenta um, instead of that transparent pyro orange, but there is still a little bit more of that orange left over in the palette. So it's going to be a little bit lighter than the next one uh, or a little bit warmer than the next one. Um, so now I'm doing another flower shape and this time it's just three petals because like I said, this is an imaginary scenery um, it can be whatever you want it to be and i don't want all of the flower shapes to be exactly the same but i'm doing kind of the same thing for each flower with the splatters and the water bottle spraying and um, you can always change the shape of the flowers as you go as well so again dropping in that color and you can see that it's mostly that pure um, quinacridone magenta um, but it still has a little bit of that warmth in it. Not, not a lot, but there was still a little bit left in the mixing area. And I'm trying to keep centers for all the flowers because later I want to add um, some yellow in the centers. And again, going in and adding some of the shadow color with that quinacridone violet. And like I said, you can do this whenever you want. It's just, 
for me with the loose painting and to make it less stressful and more fun for me, I like adding it as I'm going in the first layer. And it kind of gives you more like unpredictable effects, which I, I tend to love in these loose kind of paintings like this. And again, splattering the color. This time I switched up the color. It's not the quinacridone violet. I used the um, quinacridone magenta for this one. So here I'm going to add another flower again with water. So it's the same thing throughout the entire painting, laying down the puddles of water first um, and then splattering with water and um, spraying with water. I think there's one flower that I forget to do that on, but I finish it later. Um, so this one is just going to be that pure kind of quinacridone magenta color. And then I, sorry, I hit my camera there. And then I drop in that, uh, the darker shade for the shadows and everything. And again, this is just because I want the color to go from like a little bit warmer to cooler to purpley to kind of like a bluish purple down in the bottom. And you can do whatever colors you want. And here is a white area where the water didn't touch the paper, like where I didn't paint any water on there. And that's perfectly fine. I'm just going to leave it alone. It just adds kind of a highlight to that petal and it's, it makes the flower more dynamic. And for this flower, I didn't feel like it was loose enough. So I'm going in with clean water. This is why it's always nice to have that clean water bucket and kind of moving the water at the edges around so that the paint kind of flows out and it becomes a little bit more loose. Also, I apologize for you being able to see like my glasses and stuff and my face and hair eventually. Um, I'm standing up now, so you're just seeing my glasses, but eventually I'll be sitting down and I'm blind and I have to get close to the painting. Um, so you'll end up seeing my really messy hair and face and everything. So I apologize ahead of time for that. But again, dropping in that darker color, leaving a little area for the center and dropping in some darker color around the edges as well. And like I said, I don't do this for all the flowers, but for some of them I do. And as we go, you can see like the top flowers, you can see how the paint is kind of spreading and making it look like a flower without me doing a lot of work and everything. And that's really nice how it like spreads out and does all that. So I feel like even with the first and second flower, I don't really need to add anything to make them look like flowers other than the centers. And again with the splatter and starting with another flower and this time I want it to be a four petal flower again. And with the three petal flowers, I did them kind of different shapes and at different angles so they wouldn't all look the same. Again, you can do whatever you want. You can make all of the flowers exactly the same shape if you want um, because it will turn out a little bit different just based on how the water flow, how the paint flows in the water and uh, the shape that you paint the petals in and stuff like that. This is the one that I think I forgot to splatter water and then spray things, but I can do that after I lay the paint in and you'll see that in just a minute. So here I'm actually taking that quinacridone violet and adding it to the quinacridone magenta. So I get a darker version, kind of more of a purpley color. And again, just look how beautiful that paint kind of flows out. And there's areas where there's not as much water, so the paint doesn't flow and that leaves more highlights. And then if you look at the painting that I, the flower that I just did right before this one, you can see like where some of the darker paint flows out and leaves like kind of these lines and stuff, which adds to the shading of the flower. So for this, for the shadow color, I'm taking that quinacridone violet and then adding some of that uh, are some French ultramarine because I need it to be darker than the quinacridone violet itself. And then I'm adding the shadow colors, mostly adding shadow colors kind of towards the center of the flower. And every now and then I add it towards the edge of the flower as well, just depending on what I think it, the flower needs. So like I said here, um, I didn't spray the water and everything. So I'm going to do it now just to kind of make things loose, more loose. And again, I can go in with my brush and change things up as well. And you can see to the right of that flower, it made this huge like petal shape that doesn't make sense for that flower. So I, I lifted up 
instantly because quinacridone, uh, quinacridone violet, sorry, is a very staining color. But don't worry about it. It's a loose, it's a loose painting. You can go in with your brush and kind of change how things look. Um, but if you do make a mistake like that and it's a staining color, be sure to move it kind of quickly. But I think that area will be kind of covered up a little bit later to, later on. Uh, so again, just taking my brush to kind of make this flower look a little bit more loose and adding some splatters so that the paint kind of spreads out a little bit more. And you can tell because I didn't spray the water first that it looks a little bit less loose than the previous flowers, but that's okay. It just adds to the the difference in the flowers and the the dynamic of the painting. Everything doesn't have to be exactly the same. Everything doesn't have to be loose. All of the flowers don't have to be exactly the same amount of looseness, if that makes sense. And then all of them don't have to be like tight and have all the same uh, shading and everything because it is like an abstract loose floral painting. Just let the paint do its thing and have fun. So again, spraying. And here I spray just a little bit too much. I'm trying to make this flower a little bit smaller because we're kind of getting towards the bottom. And then um, also I want it to be a different angle than all the other flowers. So I'm trying to make it to where one petal is kind of looking towards us and the other petals are kind of going up in the air away from us. Um, I kind of have to work on that one to change it up afterwards. But again, that's the usefulness of having a clean bucket of water so that you can kind of change things around without adding paint and just kind of pull the paint around as you need to. So just dropping in that quinacridone violet mixture. And again, going in with my brush to kind of make it more florally, more loose, make it the shape that I want it to be. And picking up any color that I don't think needs to be there. So that front petal, I didn't want it to be that long, so I kind of picked that up a little bit. And then I'm going in with clean water and just to kind of, again, make it loose, spreading that color out a little bit more. And as I add that clean water, the color from the edges spread to the, to where the water is. I don't know what other artists call it, but I call that pulling out the color or making it flow, whatever you want to call it. And then taking more of that ultramarine for the shadows here, just to make it a little bit darker than the previous flower. And just shading where I think there needs to be kind of a darker color in the flower. And splattering some of that color around. Splatters always add to like the looseness of a painting. So I love splatters. They're so much fun. And if you don't overdo them, they usually tend to look nice. So now I'm doing a bud instead of a flower. Um, so just adding water to the paper first. Again, sorry about my head. And then I'm kind of taking that brush and kind of spreading out the water at the tip so it looks like the flower is starting to bloom but it hasn't quite done it yet. And splattering some water as well. And one of the, uh, the second reason that I splatter the water not just to make the flower more loose is when I splatter the color later, if the color adds if the color mixes with the water splatters, then it's gonna have more of a soft edge, but then if it lands on dry paper, it has more, has more of a hard edge, so that adds to like the dynamic of the painting. So here I added in quinacridone uh, magenta on its own, and then added quinacridone violet down at the bottom, and then that ultramarine quinacridone violet kind of mixture towards the top where the flower is blooming a little bit.
And because the pink didn't quite blend in with the purple yet, I just kind of pulled up a little bit of that pink into the purple. You don't have to do that, the color is gonna flow, but I wanted to have some little lines kind of coming up. And again, adding splatters. And then to finish off the painting, I add one more bud kind of over to the left side. I don't want there to just be one bud on the painting. Um, so I do the same thing. I drop in the quinacridone magenta and let that kind of flow out. And then I use the um, kind of bluey violet color again to create the bud shape. And I use the quinacridone violet to add the shadow down at the tip of the bud. And then I do the same thing and take clean water and kind of spread out or pull out that color at the tip of the bud to kind of make it look more like it's trying to open just a little bit, but in a little bit of a different shape than the bottom one. And I also leave a few white spaces as well. So now we're going to let this dry and then we're going to be right back as soon as it's done. And just like that, it's dry. Just kidding. I left this painting alone for about three hours while I exercised and did a few other things. But now we're going to be adding the center of the flower. And we're going to be using this diarylide, that's a really hard word to say, yellow. But we're going to add it to the center of the flowers. And we're going to be using a really juicy, very pigmented mix of this um, yellow straight from the pan. I kind of let, just wet the pan and pick it up straight from the pan itself. And then we're going to be using the spray bottle to spray the color once we lay it down. If your spray bottle doesn't spray uh, whenever it's upside down, make sure to spray a little bit sideways and then you'll um, be able to spray upside down. Or you can lift your paper up and just spray it straight, but then it may flow downwards. So I'm using really juicy pigment to lay the color down on all of the petals first. Make sure your pigment is very juicy and wet, otherwise it'll dry too fast. This is another reason why you may need cotton paper or why you will need cotton paper because on cellulose paper it will dry too fast and it won't spread as much whenever you spray it. So like I said, definitely make sure that the color is nice and juicy and wet and then you spray it and it kind of bursts out. That's the beauty of these core watercolors. It just They burst out so beautifully. Um, however, because it is a semi-opaque color and it does cover some of the flower. I do lift up some of it. I don't lift up all of it with the paper towel. I don't use the rag for this purposes. Like I said earlier, I do use the paper towels on the actual painting itself because the rag may leave a little bit of lint behind. Um, but it is definitely good for just lifting up paint from your brush. And in the bottom flower, I actually like some of it some of the yellow kind of coming through because it is at a, at a different angle. So I just kind of leave it alone. And then there's some where it didn't spray as much as I wanted it to. So I spray it just a little bit more to get it to spread out some more. And I just, like I said, leave the bottom one alone and we're going to let this part dry and then come back when it's done and then add the, um, stem here. Or actually, I don't even think I let it I let it dry. I just go ahead and start adding the stem. I'm just aware of where I leave my hands. And I want the stem to kind of flow at like a curve going from the top flower down to the bud at the bottom. And because I used ultramarine in the flowers and the yellow in the center of the flowers, I want to go ahead and use those two colors to mix together for the stem itself. Um, so I'm using the size 8 to mix those colors together. So I'm taking French Ultramarine, and I'm just using it in the same area where I mix the Quinacridone Violet in. So taking French Ultramarine and that Diarylide, so hard to say, yellow, and mixing those together. And that's going to give us a very earthy kind of yellow because uh, French Ultramarine is a very warm blue, and then... Um, the diarylide yellow is a very warm uh, yellow as well. So we're gonna get like a very natural earthy green and we're gonna use the tip of the brush to kind of paint on the stem. And it doesn't matter where you start, it just matters that everything that you paint kind of connects. And I'm trying to think of the best way for me to paint it without having problems and making sure I can connect it the way I want it to. So I start kind of in the middle you can start wherever you want. 
and I just do kind of a, a line there and connect it to the flower petals. And I'm using pretty juicy paint here as well, not very dry, um, because I do want to loosen these lines up as well. I don't want to have um, extremely loose florals with a very straight edged um, line there. And I'm trying to curve the, the stem as I go. And I thicken it up towards the bottom And I kind of edit it as I go to, to get it the way I want it to be. You can do this however you want. You don't even have to have one single stem for all the flowers. You can have um, a stem for each and every flower and bud there is. You can add extra color to each flower, whether it's the yellow or the purple or blue or whatever, and make puddles and then stomp your paper down and have that kind of flow down and be your stems. You can do whatever you want. Just giving you a few ideas there. So I'm trying to keep the stems here wet, a lot of pigment, because like I said, I want to kind of loosen them up with water in just a little bit. So I'm trying to think of how I'm adding it to the top flower. And so it's actually gonna curve out away from the top flower and I'm gonna add leaves to it later. So it's going to kind of look like it's adding to the, the top flowers added to it as well, but then the stem still kind of goes up with some leaves at the top. Just to, to kind of give more of that curve to that, to the painting. So now I'm going to take some clean water and I'm going to start with what I think is probably the driest part. And I know this sounds like it shouldn't be but the top part where, that i just added is actually the driest because my brush wasn't freshly dipped into the paint um so it would have probably dried quicker than the rest so i like i said i'm just using clean water and kind of pulling out that color because ultramarine settles down a little bit faster more of the yellow is coming out so you're not seeing um, the deep green that we get coming out you're seeing more of a yellowy green coming out which is kind of a cool effect I mean, it still looks green, but you're not getting as much of the blue pulling out with the, um, with the yellow. And I'm trying not to go overboard with this because you definitely can, but where it's close to the flowers, I'm trying to make the color flow just a little bit more um, to kind of look like a little bit of shading without actually adding the shading. <laughs> and you see how much yellow just kind of bursted out there? It looks really cool. <clears throat> and in some places where I think maybe it's a little bit too much, then I lift up some of the color, but I do it in like, I don't do it in one big circle or anything like that. I do it kind of in blob so that it still looks loose. And then I go down to the bottom one because uh, it's probably starting to dry now enough to where I can still kind of pull the color out, but, um, not too dry although down at the bottom here it is a little bit too dry so add just a little bit more color so that it'll spread out just a little bit and then go back to my clean brush and spread some of the color out on the other side So up at the top there, uh, next to the bud, where I pulled out the color a little bit, it looks like there's like a little green shape kind of protecting the bud a little bit. And that was unintentional, it just turned out that way. But I think that's pretty cool. And in some places I'm starting with the paint and pulling it out and then adding water and then other places I'm adding water around the, the area and then touching the paint and letting it flow out. Um, that just gives a different effect throughout the entire stem. So now I'm adding the stems where they would connect to the flowers that are kind of separated from that kind of central stem. 
So doing the same exact thing, same process for the whole thing. And don't be afraid to like turn your page a little bit and move it around so that you can get the best angle for how you're painting. Especially when you're doing lines like this, it's kind of hard to go in a different direction than your muscle memory or your hand is used to. And again, remember, this is fun, loose painting. Everything doesn't have to be perfect. And here, this stem kind of already touched where the water was there, which kind of already gives it that loose effect. So I don't really have to do a lot to change that one. And I think that's it for the extra stems that I need to add in. So now I'm cleaning my brush and going in with some water and giving it that loose, fe loose feel again. You could also do this wet on wet. Um, you could just make sure your first layer is dry and go over where you want the stems with some water, but don't let it be too wet because then the paint would just burst out everywhere. Let the water kind of soak into the paper a little bit and then uh, drop in the lines where you want them to be. Um, and that would give you a loose effect. And then later, if you want a little bit more detail, you could go in after the painting is dry and add more detail. Um, but that will give you a completely different look than this right here. It just depends on what you're looking for. There's so many different ways to, to attack a watercolor painting and give it a different style. That's why it's so fun and my favorite medium to work with. So this is just something that I do. I don't know if you guys do it as well, but I have for some of my colors, especially the yellows in my palette, I have two pans of each yellow so that um, if I'm mixing with green or, or with blue or something like that, I have one that it's okay if I mix with green, but if I want that pure color as well, then I can um, add that, I can have that handy without having to kind of waste paint by cleaning that pan. And then here's a stem that I kind of forgot or didn't see at first, so I'm adding that. And making it loose as well. And then once this is done, I'm gonna let everything dry again and then come back in and add some leaves. But I want everything to be dry because the leaves, even though I'm going to make them loose, they're going to be touching some of the other stuff. And I also want to add centers to the flowers. So like I said, I'm going to let this dry and I'll be back. So this has had a chance to completely dry. Uh, so now we're going to add these center to the flowers. You don't have to add a center to the flowers. I just, because I want to use this specific color in my leaves, I want to add it somewhere else in the painting. So I'm using the cobalt teal, which is one of my overall favorite colors and like every brand. Um, I absolutely love it. It is an opaque color, so you can use it on top of other colors and those colors won't show through as much. Um, so I'm getting a very thick version of this color. I added water to the, um, to the pan and I'm getting it really, really juicy with pigment and not a lot of water because I want opaque little dots on my flowers. So I'm just gonna take it with the smallest brush um, and add little dots. You can use a bigger brush if you want to, but it tends to waste more paint, um, especially since we're just using little tiny dots. Um, so as to not waste paint, I just go with the smallest paintbrush and pick up more paint for every flower so that it'll keep the opacity. And my initial purposes for this was to create tiny little dots on the yellow parts, but as you can see in the first flower, some of them 
um, when it's spread out a little bit, I didn't space them out enough, so they kind of merged together. So to fix that throughout the rest of the painting, I kind of merged some of the dots as well, so it looks intentional. Although I did initially like just the dots kind of separated out a little bit more. So in the next painting, I do know to kind of keep them a little bit separate. But you can do whatever you want for the center of the flower. You can even just add shading in the center if you want to, like maybe add a darker orange or a red that you've already used or something like that. But I'm doing it with this teal because I like that pop of color. Um, and also these are imaginary flowers. And then also because I want to use that teal in the leaves. Um, I don't want the leaves to be the same color as the stem. I want them to be a little bit different. And I love the mixture of this teal with that diarylide yellow. So again, just adding dots. And here I am kind of merging those dots so it looks intentional throughout the painting that they kind of merge together. In all honesty, I could have just went back and kind of lifted up the dots from the first flower when I noticed them merging together, but it's, it's not necessary, but I could have done it. But looking at it now, I actually kind of like the way it looks. It looks like a teal kind of shade at the top flower, so I kind of like it. So again, kind of um, taking that teal color, like I said, and mixing it with the diarylide yellow to create the green that I want. I don't like wasting paint and because the silver black velvet brushes hold so much paint and water, I tend to squeeze the brush when I have a lot of pigment on there to get all of it out without wasting it. So here I'm picking up a lot of the diarylide yellow so that I don't have to rinse my brush in between and I'm tapping it above the teal to make sure it's enough before I mix it and I notice that it is so I go ahead and mix it and it gives me this really bright vibrant kind of green that's beautiful on its own but um, I then uh, kind of squeeze my brush out again to get that excess paint out uh, after mixing it completely and making sure it's the right shade of green that I want and then to tone it down a little bit so it's not so Kermit the Frogish green I take a little bit of that quinacridone magenta um, and I don't add too much at first because I don't want to accidentally turn it too muted um, and then I add a little bit more and so now it looks more kind of like an earthy earthy but still vibrant kind of green and then I add a little bit of that to another well in the palette just to kind of water it down so that I can pick from both wells and each leaf won't be the same exact um, tint of this mixture so I'll have a lighter tint and a darker tint just so that there will be a little bit of variation in the leaves throughout the painting and then for some reason, I don't know why, I take a little bit of the French Ultramarine. Um, I want to use that as the shadow color for my leaves, but I don't know why I'm putting it in the well because I tend to never, like if I'm using a shadow color, I tend to go straight into the pan itself. So I just spray the pan with water so that the French Ultramarine will be ready for me to pick it up when I need it to be. Um, and then I start making the, uh, leaf shapes. So I try to think about where I want the leaves to be uh, on the painting to keep the composition kind of together without distracting from it. And I don't want to add too many leaves, but I want there to be enough leaves and I want them to kind of connect in a way to the flower. Um, not all of them are connect going to connect to the stem, but all of them will connect to the flower. And you could also kind of wet the page where you want your leaves and kind of lay them down in loose and everything as well. There's so many different methods that you could do this, but because I want that sharp line, that white area in the leaves, um, this is why I'm doing it wet on dry and then I will be loosening up the leaves later. Um, and so I paint like two at most three leaves at a time and then I kind of loosen them up as I go. So now I'm painting the second leaf up here. making sure to keep the leaves very moist because I do wanna, the same way that I did with the stem, I kinda wanna pull out some of that color with clean water. 
So now I'm taking that ultramarine stem color and I'm gonna connect the leaves to the stem with that color and let it bleed in just a little bit with the leaves as well. And I could just leave it there without adding any shadow colors, but I go into the French ultramarine and drop some of that in there just to have some deeper values on the page. Um, and the reason that the ultramarine is not like bursting out into the leaves is because there's already pigment, heavy pigment, like the teal. Um, and so because there's already pigment and not as much water, it's not like bursting out like it did with the flowers, but it is going to flow out. It's not just going to sit there and create a hard edge because it's wet. It will flow out. Sorry, you're just staring at my head for just a little bit. I, I don't know what I'm doing right there. Thinking, I guess, of where to put leaves. It's always a good idea to stop and think about where you're going to place things. And if you say you have your first initial flower arrangement laid down and you don't know what you're going to do next, it is definitely okay to take a day, two, three days, a week, however long it takes for you to kind of figure out how you want your composition to be and where you want to place things, what you want to place. It's definitely okay to do that. Don't stress over it. You don't have to finish a painting all in one go. I do that quite often, actually. I have a few paintings like hanging on a rope in my, um, with little, what are they called? The things that you used to, clothespins, the little tiny wooden clothespins. I have them, some paintings that are unfinished hanging in my room so that I can look at them every now and then and think about what I want to add to them or change or any details I feel like I should add stuff like that. Okay, so here I'm actually doing four flowers before I pull them out, pull the color out with water. Uh, I think the reason that I'm doing more uh, flowers at once is because I want to give the cobalt teal time to settle down and the ultramarine time to like kind of spread out a little bit. Because when the cobalt teal settles down a little bit, what happens is mostly the only the yellow comes out instead of the teal. And here I actually took that ultramarine when I dripped it into the leaf. I mixed it with the cobalt teal and our light yellow mixture. So I get kind of a different shade of leaf here. So now I'm going to pull all these leaves out. Um, pull some loose shapes out from the leaves. Pull some of the, the pigment out from the leaves so they're not just... Um, hard all hard edged all the way around and I am flipping the paper the board around um, the paper around So if you are taping your paper down make sure to tape it to a board that you can move because you do want to move your Paper around as you go. You don't want to just um, Have it on the like tape it to your desk because then you won't be able to move it if you need to So again doing the same thing that I did with the stems trying to kind of loosen up the leaves a little bit. And like I said, you can see that mostly the yellow is coming out and not really the blue. And clean water to kind of pull it out, but I don't want it to go this far, so I'm kind of lifting up some of the color. So you can have control in your loose paintings. They don't have to all be wild and crazy. And this is how to have kind of loose, flowy, almost wet into wet kind of style without having it uncontrollable. So I'm going to quit talking and let you listen to some of the music while you watch me do the same thing to the leaves throughout the painting.
So that is it for the painting of the leaves and everything. I think the last thing that I'm going to do is add some splatters just to kind of change it up a little bit. And you can do this in many, many different ways. And in different areas of the painting, you could leave splatter just up on the top and leave the bottom blank, or you could just splatter on the bottom, leave the top blank, splatter on the right side. It's all up to you um, how you do this. I'm gonna do it kind of in like a diagonal shape across the swirly flowers. So first I am splattering with just water for like the purposes that I said earlier that if it lands in the water, it's gonna be more soft edged. And if it lands on its own, it's gonna be more hard edged just to give the splatters kind of um, more dynamic, I guess. Um, so I'm splattering a little bit in the center of like the bushy flower area just so that it kind of flows together. Um, and I'm using cobalt teal as the first color. I use cobalt teal and diarylide yellow because they're the main colors that I don't kind of use on their own in the painting. They don't stand out as much other than the center of the flower. Um, and I want them to kind of stand out and be shown that they were used in the painting. Um, so that's the main reason I'm splattering only those two colors. You can splatter whatever color that you want. Just kind of try to make sure that it's a color that you used in your painting, whether it's a color that you mixed or even uh, just a color that you use straight as a shadow, um, just to kind of keep the harmony of your painting together. Um, and I like that if you see where the splatters kind of landed in the wet area, they kind of spread out. So I like that. So I'm going to spray the splattered areas with water. And over time, as the painting dries, this is going to become more pronounced as everything kind of spreads out in the water. Um, and gonna, it's going to give it kind of a different effect. Um, so that's it. I like how the painting turned out. I like the splatters and how like the, the flowers kind of do like this curvy shape. Um, it's really great. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and tap the notification bell. If you have any questions or comments, please type them down below and everything I use in the video will be listed in the description bar. I hope you guys have a great day. and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.